I can everybody hear me? Oh, yeah, that's great. Is Heather here? Are you here, Heather? Uh, yeah. yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm here. All right, so since we're a little late already, let's get right to it. So today's topic is basically how to find, curate, and share trending content to generate leads from your social channels. So we'll be talking about content curation and basically what it is, whether it's legal or not, uh, how it can benefit you and what exactly does Discover, which is a feature of Content Studio, does for you. And then we'll be talking a little bit about how content curation can help you generate leads. And at the end of that, Heather will be giving you a tour. Um, I forgot to introduce ourselves. So I am Manur. I am a digital marketing specialist here at Content Studio. And Heather is our... Hi, guys. Uh... Uh, can you guys hear me now? Sorry, I had myself on the mute. So um, might have to calibrate that on your end. So yeah, I'll be the person uh, giving you guys the, the tour at the end of the uh, webinar. Yeah, of this the slides, and I will just gonna take it from there. All right, why don't you take it up? So let's get right to it. So first of all, what is content curation? On the right, you can see an image, and it's basically a really cute drawing of what exactly content curation is. Content curation is basically selecting, gathering, structuring, and then distributing content from various sources on the internet. And these can be various sources, like here it says you can be sharing a link to your blog post or you know, maybe sharing someone else's posts or maybe, or just even quotes and uh, advice from industry experts. It doesn't have to be something specific. So content curation is basically kind of like a strategy that people use in content marketing to accomplish kind of like a content production frequency, right? And this is the kind of content that you're putting out. It's the kind of content that best relates um, to your um, niche or to whatever you're selling. And it can be from whatever uh, sources you guys want. I mentioned a few above. And it actually provides a very useful insight on the topics that you're discussing as well, because when you pick content that is relevant to your industry, it adds value for your audience. So that's your content plus extra content and it works for everybody. And lastly, content curation basically saves you time because you, um, can uh, publish content that's not original and it helps you uh, to keep uploading fresh content, especially when you don't have time to create new content constantly. So that brings us to the question, is content curation legal? And drum Laurel, the answer is yes. Yes, it is. And how you can make it legal is as long as you are mentioning or citing the source of the content that you're sharing, everything is good. That being said, you can also add great value to the content that you're sharing. So you don't just directly have to share it. You can also add things of your own choice to it. You can uh, share either relevant or useful information, like I mentioned before. And a lot of brands do this, like Huffington Post. It does, it does share other people's content, and it works great for them. That being said, content curation can be a little bit difficult because, you know, if you don't have a specific tool that you're using, um, you have to individually and manually go to different websites, search content, look for that kind of content, and then, you know, make a proper sheet for yourself so you have it all in one place and then you can share it. So um, what people normally do um, if they want to curate content is that they use the help of a content curation tool, which we'll be talking about um, further in the presentation, but right now, Let's talk about how content creation can actually benefit you. So 85% of B2B marketers credit curated content for their content marketing success. And that is not a small number. So this goes to show how useful and how many people use content curation um, when they're running their businesses, right? So how exactly is it benefiting you? 
So number one, it kind of saves time. And how it does that is that you have more time to focus on creating content of your own, original content. Uh, and other than that, it can also help you save money. And how it does this is that if you're creating original content, depending on what type of fun you're creating, like for example, if you, um, you know, publish videos, you might need to invest in, uh, you know, people that might want to act in your video or, you know, an editor that is going to edit your videos or if you're working on graphics and uh, a writer if you're, you know, working on blog writing. So it saves you time because you can spend more time creating your own content and, you know, upload uh, things that are valuable for your audience and relevant to your niche. Then number two is the fact that you can never run out of content ideas. And the reason for that is the internet is such a vast space that it actually has so much content and so much valuable content that you can share that it's really impossible to not find something from your niche. Number three, it helps build relationships. And how it does that is basically you can tag the original creators or email the creators when you're done sharing their content to kind of build a relationship with them, right? So if you tell them that, hey, I shared your content, you can have a look here, it's going to be all good for you. But just remember that, um, you know, it's not always taken well when you um, ask them for something in return. So you have to be careful about that. So it's Try not to email them and be like, hey, I did this, but so can you do this all the time? And lastly, we have the fact that it helps position your brand as a thought leader. And how it does that is because since you're sharing other people's content, people see your um, account or whatever you're sharing as a very knowledgeable account, right? Because you're really into other people's content and you're sharing that content with those people and it's valuable content. And it can also help start discussions. So something that is not being talked about enough or something that you want to touch upon, you can really get your audience to pitch in with you and start a conversation and it helps you that way as well. And you can also find out what they want to know about. So what can Discover do for you? Discover is a content studio feature and it basically helps you, number one, find and share trending content, which is exactly what we're looking for. Like I said, it's difficult to look for um, content online if you're you know, doing it manually and it's time consuming as well. And we want content curation to be the easiest thing there is um, so that we have time to spend more uh, on you know, creating our own content. Then it helps you kind of discover lots of content. Like I said, our content studio crawls over 4 million plus domains. So you can only imagine how much content is lying there. So it, it's, um, it can really help you out. Number three, the, it is that Discover kind of helps you create noise-free and highly targeted custom topic feeds. And Heather's gonna show you how to do this manually, but let me just kind of you know go over what this means. The fact here is that, like I said, if you're doing a uh, content curation manually, you're going to have to create topics yourself and, you know, um, put them somewhere so you can reach out to them whenever you need them. So here, uh, Content Studio actually helps you create topics of your choice, things related to your industry, and you have all the content relevant to that there, and you can add filters, and um, that way it's really niche specific and you know exactly what kind of content you can, you know, share with your audience. Then secondly, we've got, the, we've got other than just sharing content, we've got um, influencer marketing as well. So our Discover feature helps you reach out to other brands, other people as well. And lastly, um, Content Studio actually helps you curate content directly from the composer. So there is a Discover feature, but you can also um, you know, share articles and videos and stuff right from the composer. So. How does content curation generate leads from your social channels? And here is a, another app that is called Replug. It is our sister app, and it actually uh, can help you generate leads. And how I'm saying this is because Content Studio has an integration that has Replug integrations. So what it helps you do, uh, what it helps you do, uh, do is that it, number one, helps you shorten your links. So you can actually add a very customized uh, link shortening and that way you can brand your links and they're, you know, you can track them as well because we've got UTM trackers and you can actually set perimeters to see what source your audience is coming from. And that way you'll know exactly where they come from, where they go to, and you can reach out to them later. And lastly, you can 
add call to actions as well. So if you're sharing content, you can add call to actions, you can get them to, you know, subscribe to your channel, or you can get them to subscribe to your newsletter, whatever your call to actions might be. And this really helps you boost your um, lead generation game because you can actually track and follow your audience and uh, you'll know exactly what kind of content they want, where they're coming from, what device they're using, all of that jazz. So that being said, we can move on to the tour, which is going to be given by Heather, and he's going to explain to you exactly how to use these features and how you can best benefit from all of this. And in the end of the tour, uh, we'll be having a question and answer session, and uh, you guys can pop in your questions in the chat, and we will be very happy, happy to answer this for you. So Heather, you can take it up from here. All right, thank you so much for the uh, introduction and all the uh, good things. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you guys. And uh, we're, we're going to have a look at it in action and see how it works. OK, so you guys should be able to see the screen. And uh, just going to go ahead and start off with the Discover module first, where generally uh, you go to, to find the curated content for yourself. And uh, it, it already has. A number of pre-curated topics over there and uh, but you can always search up anything at all in there as well uh, i think i've followed quite a lot of or is it uh custom topics over here so it's going to take up to take a, a minute to load up i guess So there we go. There are some of the uh, topics. Okay, it's loading up again. Sorry about that. Oh, we're going to wait for this to happen. And, uh, All right, there we go. So uh, yeah, on the top, it gives you like the top stories from the topics that you've already followed, uh, whether that's basketball, uh, construction management, cricket, whatever you, you've been following. Uh, but you can always go ahead and uh, find the stuff relevant to your own niche by going into the simple search field option. And over there, you can uh, search up essentially for anything at all. And, and you're gonna be uh, filled with tons of sources to choose from. You can actually read the whole content within the platform. Uh, including all the images, videos, they're all going to load up within that same article. You can uh, go ahead and also see the engagement score, uh, also uh, the sentiment value for each particular article that you're looking into. So let's just uh, have a look at the search field over here. And uh, so yeah, some of the custom topics that are already coming up down below. So I'm going to go ahead and look for uh, something. I'm just gonna, let's just start off with Content Studio as a whole, see what comes up. So, um, and at the same time, you, you'll always have the access to our uh, our unique filters that are basically there at, at all points. So whether you wanna look it up from a specific region in a particular language, perhaps, and uh, the, the date range filters, of course, and relevancy uh, based on the shares uh, from a particular social handle. So if, you, if you're trying to like build up your audience on Twitter or Pinterest or Reddit. So you can basically uh, find the content that, that's been mostly shared on those networks uh, using that filter over here. So, uh, oh, okay. So you can see over here, this article has already been, uh, so the planner over here, this, uh, this bit over here is so intuitive. It also uh, takes care of the previously shared content. So it says that it's already been shared onto two pre social media channels. And uh, it's, it's, it's uh, this content is coming in from Medium and, uh, reading it up is real simple you can click up on it you can read it up and uh you've got the engagement right on the top where it's been primarily published the sentiment score sentiment score and the engagement score uh is not uh correlated in a sense so at certain times there's going to be like a uh, negative sentiment value uh given on a particular sub uh topic and the the shares on that are going to be uh massive 
So that does not really mean that it always has to provide a certain sentiment value to the users as long as uh, it has some potential engagement going on and it, like people are gonna talk about a certain thing that could be anything negative as well. So I'm um, gonna go ahead and try to have it shared onto uh, different social channels over here. So let's just try out with the same one over here and see what comes up. So just click on that. Your um, social composer is gonna open up right over there. And there we go. It's loading up the, uh, yeah, the image and all the, the meta description, et cetera. You've got the change variation option, change caption, which we have discussed previously when we were discussing our uh, composer section. You've got your account selection over here. Um, and Manu was mentioning that there is also a way where you can essentially uh, uh, look up something using the, the composer itself. And that is the assistant tool that comes up when you're in the composer section uh, from here. And you go there, it will essentially save you the trouble. Although you will not have the access to the, 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 the topics that you previously followed, but you can actually look it up from a different sources. Like if you're looking for articles, videos from YouTube, daily motion, uh, tweets from Twitter, uh, images from Flickr, uh, Imager, Pixabay, Giphy. And if you've got something saved in your pocket account and you saved something and it, it, it relates with that, it's gonna bring up those results as well. So, um, and uh, curated topics over there uh, also can be shared or repurposed uh, in a way to be shared onto your blogging channels. And um, as Manu mentioned that it's always best to put up your own voice uh, to those articles that you're sharing that you're gonna be repurposing for yourself. So uh, let's just have a look at it and I'll walk you through the process. And it takes care of all that uh, copyright infringement issues because it provides the attributes to the original source and the author. So for instance, if I were to like go up, open up this particular uh, curated topic, startups and VC, and I'm gonna go ahead and share that onto the blogging channel over there. So that will include a hyperlink and it mentions that the content was originally published here and uh, this particular uh, hyperlink includes the link to the original post over there as well. So uh, this way um, you are pretty much safe in sharing the content and uh, it's always best that you build up some reputation with the uh, people that you're uh, going to be sharing their content. So. Right. And at the same time, these uh, automations, uh, uh, sorry, uh, these articles that you're looking up over here can be added into your evergreen automation recipes. And for that, you see this tiny bot over here. You just click on that. And if you have an existing automation recipe, as you can see over here, I've got one that says the best thing that you ever, ever had. So if I click on that, it's going to uh, be added into uh, my automation recipe. And then I can go ahead and create variations for that, for the said uh, post over here, the one that says Japan's second largest, largest bank to launch institutional Bitcoin. So uh, like you, you can see that this news uh, is big for, for influencers uh, who are in the crypto industry and uh, stuff like this is basically uh, holds a whole lot of engagement value to them. So um, using a replug, how replug could be essentially uh, used uh, with any of the content that you're going to be sharing. So let me get to, uh, let me look up something over here. Although the replug option is gonna be available in the composer section at all times, but if you're gonna be sharing something from here, well, let's just say, uh, just drop use this one. So the first thing that happens is that it's gonna shorten your link to whatever link shortening option that you've selected because not only uh, we are pushing you with a specific link shortening uh, selection, uh, you're gonna have uh, Bitly support, whoever has got a Bitly account that can connect those, uh, Firebase, Google's Firebase dynamic links, Google's own, uh, Content Studio's own link shortener that has this particular slug. 
And uh, sorry, this one is coming in from the Google's Firebase dynamic links. The one that we have uh, is much smaller. That is CSTU.io slug. But replug uh, does a couple of things uh, additional to the normal link shortening options. So replug has its own dashboard, pretty much similar to Content Studio. Over there, you can do a number of things, even create bio links for your Instagram accounts and custom links and a whole lot of other uh, things that you might want to explore uh, from the platform. So uh, that's my uh, campaign that I have created. You can actually create a number of different uh, campaigns for yourself. So the ones that I have uh, set up over here are divided over here uh, in terms of their functionalities. Over, the first one is just the link shortening and the retargeting pixels that actually allows you to uh, gauge your traffic where it's coming in from and all that kind of thing. But uh, the other option, the one that includes call to actions, uh, I've created this one separately because there will be certain websites that will probably prevent you from using call to actions on their websites uh, because they do not allow iframing. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply the replug shortening link on top of it. Okay, there we go. It tells you that uh, iframing on medium is not allowed. So we can get that out of the way and try sharing something from a different source. Okay. Try this one out. Okay, there we go. It worked up right away. And I will open that up and show you what the potential use case for this could be. So um, you're running a particular page and uh, you've got a, a particular following and uh, you, you keep on sharing your, your uh, the relevant content to increase engagement. And the idea is you're sharing the links, your links are still gonna be masked Somebody clicks on them, they're, they're going to see the replug link mass on top of their original domain. And uh, then all of a sudden, a pop-up appears on, on top of the screen. And it's basically uh, trying to uh, redirect traffic onto your own websites, whatever link that you will apply at the back end of this particular call to action that you see over here. So I've just kept it simple just to give you an example of how it works. And this could be designed in a number of ways. It could come up with a sound. It could be. It could come up when you're trying to like close the link, and it just appears right over there and tries to stop you. That this particular service is available over there and there, here and there, and you just click on that, and it takes you to your own uh, channel, whatever you've got set up at the back end of it. And that way, um, you're sharing a link to your own advantage even though that curated content is not written by you, it's masked and uh, people are clicking on it and then in turn coming onto your own website. Uh, this is great for e-commerce businesses and other uh, people who are trying to basically uh, provide a certain value, a service to their users. And um, what better way would be to um, share something relevant to them and then provide that same service over to them. So it's, particularly a popular thing currently being used by a lot of marketers. So um, replug is the best in, in terms of doing all that for you guys. And uh, it's so simple, just a couple of clicks and uh, that should do the trick for you guys. Right, and uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much all what you can do and cannot do. And uh, you can see the, uh, the, the engagement and, the, and all the stuff right on top of it. And if a particular curated content that you see over here has been shared by somebody famous, it's, it's gonna be listed over there. So you can see that over there that's been uh, shared by an influencer and it, by influencer, what we mean is that person has to have a certain set of followers uh, in order for them to be included as an influencer. And uh, you also have options uh, in your search uh, to, to basically find it from a number of different uh, type of people as well that uh, works on the influencer section, which we will be discussing at another point in time in another webinar perhaps. But for, for now, this is uh, what we have over here in the discover module. And another thing over here is the insights that um, 
also will help you do a lot of things for you guys. So insights is, uh, we're probably gonna be discussing this in, uh, in detail, another uh, uh, session with you guys, but just to give you a, a bit of uh, insight into the insights is that uh, it lets you do some market research from within the platform. So you search up a particular keyword and it not just brings you the results based on that keyword, it tells you like how that, inter how that keyword is doing on the internet as a whole. So right now for the last three months, uh, this is the summary uh, that we have. So it has analyzed over this many articles. That's the total engagement that has, it has recorded, uh, average engagements by channel, um, and number of articles being published versus the average shares uh, based on a particular keyword. So let me look up something more relevant over here that's going to have a lot more data to uh, represent over here. So yeah, there we go. So. Uh, this gives you a good idea where to start and uh, what sort of uh, content that you should be writing that's going to uh, bring you more engagement for you guys. So you can see that uh, it says number of content items. So you've got the articles, how to documents, listicle reviews, podcasts, tutorials, webinars, and infographics. So you've got your uh, articles there on the top with the most engagement. Then you've got the how to documents and so on and so forth. You get the idea that uh, if you create a certain type, of content, what sort of uh, engagement that you will potentially receive against that. And it gives you uh, a set of keywords extracted from the articles. And this actually helps you create good hashtags for your posts and also tells you to explore the other uh, items from the list over here uh, with engagement per content and how hard or how difficult, how hard or how easy it could be to read about a certain subject. So. Crypto being something technical, so it ranges from difficult to fairly difficult. And then you've got some, of course, uh, easier documents and content available for, uh, for other uh, users. Uh, the good days for you to publish is, uh, a post on crypto. So Saturday is the biggest day in terms of published articles. And Thursday is the most interactive day in terms of average interactions. So. Uh, and each uh, keyword that you search is going to be uh, particularly different. Uh, all this information is going to be based on that keyword. So keep that in mind. And top domains and networks uh, based on published articles. So these are the sources that it has analyzed for that uh, word. Uh, the word was crypto that we searched up. And um, you, you see a good pie chart over here. And uh, if you if you want to not have certain set of um, sources coming in and they start over here, you can always uh, unselect them. And if you want to see more detail of uh, all this, you could go into the top domain section over here. And it will tell you what websites are publishing, how many articles, what is the total engagement score on them. So if you were to like even write up some guest articles for a certain website, you will also get an idea of uh, where they lie and uh, how lucrative it could be for you guys. And top authors, of course, it tells you about the people writing about that particular subject. Uh, this tells you um, uh, who, who they are, how many articles they've written over time, and how successful they are in their uh, work. And this will also help you uh, look them, uh, help you uh, find their own handles. Uh, you can just like look them up. You can probably follow their feeds if they have one. And uh, that should be the feed section over here. So RSS feeds, RSS feeds are particularly interesting in a sense that uh, uh, they, they tend to provide you with the most uh, recent content. So as you can see over here, I'm following the cricket feed over here and it's, uh, it's, it's coming in from ESPN Cricket when it's been published like three hours ago. So um, you can find your own RSS sources. You, if, you, if you know your, your, your source, you can either just copy paste that actual RSS feed link over here you can also upload an OPML file for it if, you, if you're going to go down uh, uh, with that uh, methodology. Or you could just like look them up based uh, uh, on keywords. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, search the same word over here and see what comes up. So there we go. So th these are all these uh, popular uh, RSS feeds that you can follow. And uh, the ones that I have already been following, you can see them over here. So uh, let's just follow one right now. Okay. Uh, Okay. Okay. 
So it has got like uh, 5K articles within this particular RSS feed that you can always explore. Um, 526 one, uh, results are currently being displayed you, and these are based on the most shared. You can always change that to most recent ones. Uh, and so according to your uh, own needs and uh, you can actually click on any one of them and read that as well from within the uh, platform. So this is like a really good way to, to manage a, a number of different feed sources as well. I mean, you, you guys must have heard about uh, the uh, Feedly, which is uh, uh, the most popular tool for us is feed, but it, uh, it is actually, uh, it comes with a lot of um, hidden uh, um, charges in terms of like, if you need to like create more uh, sections for a number of different uh, types of feeds that you're following, you, you'll have to like pay additional for that. So you, you can see that you, you can essentially like follow like unlimited number of sources from here and uh, have them shared directly onto your uh, social accounts or onto your blogging channels as well. So, uh, and uh, that's just with a couple of clicks and it's so easy to like uh, find anything from within the uh, platform. So uh, I think we're gonna be uh, moving on to um, the question and answers. If uh, I haven't missed out on anything, um, Manu, if you would like to add anything at all to. Uh... No, I think you've pretty much covered a lot of the stuff, most of the stuff actually. All right. Uh, yeah, I think uh, we've answered all of the questions, oh, okay. actually. That, that's, that's... If you guys have any questions for Heather, because he is giving us a demo of the tool itself, you can ask him right now. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions uh, uh, to the things that I have discussed, um, you can you can tag me over here at Heather and uh, I'll be uh, re responding to them myself. Houston, we have an audio issue. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, Hugh. I, I had myself on mute and I forgot about that because uh, uh, it, it was creating a bit of a reverb earlier on. So I just had myself on mute. Sorry about that. So, um, right. I, I think all these questions have been answered, but, but yeah, then again, uh, can we get a replug lifetime deal? So, um, yeah, we're not running any uh, LTD uh, plans right now, but uh, of course we have Daniel in Replug. So you might want to contact him at support at replug.io and uh, he should be able to uh, get back to you uh, with the relevant offer that he has at his disposal. So, uh, Uh, need a way to, uh, yeah, this has been suggested to us before and, uh, we will definitely have a look into that. Uh, that's a good suggestion. And, um, uh, we, we, we probably might set up something like that. We, we, we might have to look into it first and, uh, get back to you on that, whether that's going to be possible or not. Right. So the question was like, uh, do we, do we have a way to, uh, submit new content sources? So for that. Um, um, uh, that has been noted by our team. And of course, so that's a good suggestion. We're gonna have, uh, we'll definitely look into that. Mm -hmm. 
Do you guys have any more questions? If you have any more questions, let All us right. know. Luke is also here. Luke has always been our uh, biggest fan. Thank you so much, Luke. And uh, thank you for suggesting Replug over here to the rest of the people over here. Hi, Luke. So, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Don't worry, uh, CH Lock. This video will be going up on YouTube, so you can uh, watch it whenever you have the time. Neil, uh, often when I search for influencers, I know on Insta, Content Studio says they can't be found. Do you know why that might be? Love Content Studio, by the way, very good platform. So yeah, the influencer section, uh, we haven't uh, gone through that in this particular session. And the reason for that is that we are, um, we're going to be basically having another demo, uh, webinar on that, which will, of course, when, when the time comes in, uh, the influencer section will be much more uh, practically feasible for you guys. And it's going to probably do all those other things that you're trying to achieve right now with it. So, yep, that's that. Uh, yeah, uh, the webinar is recorded. Yes, it will be available on YouTube, uh, the whole entire uh, webinar from the start. And yes, uh, just so you know that uh, the influencer, if you're going to be sending that, just make sure that they have at least a following of 10K, like a minimum of 10K following, then surely we will add them for you guys, yeah. Do you guys have any, any more questions? So while everybody is asking questions, I just like to ask you guys uh, to help us out. And if there's anything uh, you want a webinar specifically on, you can let us know and we'll have one on that um, because our goal here is to help you out with the tool. So if there's anything that you specifically want to know about or uh, learn about, let us know, and we'll have a webinar on that specifically. Right. Triggers design. Yeah. Webinar uh, will be announced beforehand. And uh, we normally do that in uh, uh, like a couple of weeks before. And uh, you will be uh, notified with all the links and all that, uh, what the next webinar is going to be about and when it's going to be uh, held. And as far as the, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the, there's there's this whole new uh, revamp going on in the composer and the planner section. So guys, stay tuned, and um, you're gonna it's gonna be uh, gonna be seeing some exciting things coming uh, your way. So lots of things. Stay tuned with 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 the platform, and uh, there will be lots of under the hood performances that are gonna be taken care of, and uh, the planner section will have like a another view section and sort of other things that will make your job a lot more easier for you guys. So I think that's a wrap for us. And uh, see, uh, until next time, see you guys soon. Thank you so much for joining in. Um, I know anything you might want to add before we leave. No, uh, that's all for now. I hope you guys thought this was very helpful and we will be back with another webinar. And yes, as Heather mentioned, we've got a lot of new things coming up. So I hope you all are as excited as we are because it's going to be super. I hope wherever you are, you guys are having a great day, night, evening. I'm going to have my lunch now and you guys have yours. Have a good day. It was nice having you all here. See you.